Hey folks, Rudros here. It is Final Fantasy Friday, and just how good are the members of Morz's Soiree still in Opus 21? Are they still good enough to take a little bit of a tournament? We're going to find out. I have a special guest with me today. This isn't just my own deck tech. As a matter of fact, it's not my deck at all. I have my good buddy Dalton with me. Dalton, how are you, sir? I'm doing pretty good today. Excellent. Well, and you competed in the last RVA Weekly Tournament of the year. And you took this soiree list, which we're going to get to in one second. Uh, we're going to start with the deck tech, and then I will show how Dalton did in that RVA tournament. Could he win the whole thing? Could he finally get his first win? Stick around. We're going to find out. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe for new Final Fantasy videos every single Friday right here on Rudros Entertainment. And, of course, if you haven't already, check out the RVA channel. I'll put the link to their Twitch channel in the description below as I get all the footage from John. And, uh, you know, he's a lovely guy to talk to. So, you took soirees. And I know you've been playing this list for a while. What is it about soirees you like? So I almost didn't play in the last RVA, but I was like, ah, eh. my wife was stuck at work later. And I was like, I really want to try to get some kind of like win in before the New Year's. Say I won some kind of locals. I hadn't played in a while. So I decided to go in. So I took soiree because I was like, I already have a list built up. Kind of. I've been messing around with it ever since like the materia cups i played soiree but with opus 21 the addition of darkness manifest anything that talks about multicolors, i was like all right let's try something new so that's what really got me into playing soiree again for this opus um and that's why i decided to take it for this rv8 cup awesome so soiree has been around since opus 16 it's kind of this rainbow color package naturally a good home for warrior of light i won't talk about a lot of the main soiree stuff here because most of this is pretty well known uh, so I'm not going to go into a whole lot of that. So we'll kind of talk more about the off-color stuff, the stuff you use to supplement the deck. I do love that you're running Chantoto. Obviously, Soiree is always known for its EX burst. You have 19 in here, so almost two-fifths of the deck uh, are EX bursts. Warrior of Light is obviously a natural fit in here. You're almost always going to have Earth with Shinju, probably Amber, usually Fire Wind with Lexa and Elvis. So really, you only need either the Luka backup, which you have, uh, Tyro Shantoto, so it's pretty easy to get the wool color online. So let's talk about a forward in here that clearly influences the rest of the deck that uh, you and I have very different opinions on because it's a bit of a luck-based card, and I have terrible luck, so it doesn't work for me, but this is Kieran, and you certainly, you know, Kieran is going to get a chance to shine here in these tournament videos we'll show. Why why Kieran? So I originally liked Kieran just because I like the, the top deck roll. I kind of like the, the gamble of it, and that's, that was always just fun. But it also ended up working out really well at the Materia Cup. The reason I really played this list uh, for Opus 21 is because there's a lot of ice running around, a lot of dull freeze with mono ice aggro. You dole you out of the way and try to just take things down. Uh, and I ran into Ice Earth in one of our games as a, as a spoiler, I guess, a little bit. And he he just puts in a lot of work not being able to be that dull frozen on top of getting a free body out so that's kind of the reason why i went kieran list over like a traditional one with like other soirees and just multicolored cards like zidane and such yeah that's fair axstar is usually a pretty good staple here again will likely be able to capitalize on sunburst and gets out any of the soiree members so he seems kind of obvious now kelger this one i haven't seen this card i don't know if anyone's ever used this card why kelger I threw Kelliger in there just because I fought a lot, or I've played against a lot of, like, water ice aggro, and I was like, man, I need something to deal with, like, Griever, because I played Mono Lightning last week, not at the RVA, at a different locals, and I everything was like, break four less, break four less. I was like, I need something that breaks five or more. <laughs> um, and so we got Elvis, and we have Shantoto, but those are, like, the two backup removals. So I was, so I was looking for something that dealt, like, forward removal. Kelliger was a the thing there. I was like, I already take damage. I can probably get to the Alexa backup. So if I can get Kelger down and online off of like a Kieran, then all I do is tap Lex and I break a five or more. Then he has all the nice text, haste, brave, first strike. If you don't have that five or more. So that's kind of what I was thinking uh, with that pick. You know, it's kind of funny looking at this Kelger now with something like Sky Serpent in the meta. They, they both cost four. Sky Serpent has 9k power. He inherently has the keywords no matter what. Kelger is dependent on a condition from your opponent. And then Sky Serpent can give them to someone else. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> like, and the difference is, is Kelger's a legend and Sky Serpent's only a hero. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, that's, that's crazy to me. So. This Kel yeah, wow, what a difference. And again, I know there's other factors. This is wind. That one's light. This one can't yeah. definitely break something. But still, that's just, looking at it and thinking about it right now, I'm like, wow, what a difference that makes. For sure. Um, Arc obviously seems pretty obvious. It's an EX burst. It's a four cost for Kieran. Uh, you're probably going to get a lot of colors, so that 2K buff could be online. 
And he's yeah, Warrior of Light puts that online in one card, which is always nice. Yeah. Uh, Galoof, again, same thing. Galoof, a little weak to ice since they can just dull freeze him out of the way, but uh, I don't. it wasn't this week, but there's a previous week I watched you with Fire, and it's just, yeah, the Fire literally has no answer to that card. It's just basically yeah. impossible to remove. For sure. Yeah, Galoof, I had him up to two. I wasn't really sure. I was messing around with this list before the tournament. Um, cause I had originally had Gudon in there as like a two of, and I was like, I like Gudon. He can't be dull frozen similar to Kieran. He can attack twice, which is more aggro, but I was like, I don't know how consistently I'm going to get like the double colors and is nine K going to be enough and yeah. so on and so yeah. forth. So I, I just kind of took him out for now. I may end up putting him back in. It's kind of just up in the air at this point. So my favorite addition, you hinted at it earlier, and I called this uh, Dalton Soiree Manifest. This is Darkness Manifest, a card that... I don't know if you ever want to pay seven for, but you are definitely happy to pay two for and remove a couple. I've seen you. This card just seems very, very strong in this list. Why the Darkness Manifest? Yeah, Darkness Manifest is great for two. It's just outstanding. Uh, it says play for two, remove four cards you don't really need because Soiree has like good recursion with Madame Metal, but if they're not a Soiree, which you have a lot of, you can just remove those and play them anyway for two. Uh, and then he breaks anything when he leaves the field. So it's like a character, not just a forward, which is super nice. I was able to take out opponents backups. I can take out monsters. It's it's just a nice all around card. And then it also kind of just puts that timer on your opponent. You're like, hey, you have to deal with this or you're going to lose the game. So again, another thing for ice. Yeah, you can dull freeze them out of the way, but you're still going to take a point of damage every turn if you do. Yeah, the the exit trigger, I think, is probably one of the strongest parts of this card because there's a lot of cards that they have to specifically go to the break zone or, again, your opponent can tend to do something about this, but I do like his design that you can't just dull freeze him and ignore him because he's going to slowly kill you, but also he will get some value when you get him out of the field too. So I, I love this card. It seems to be very strong in testing. I know in one version of this list you had Sky Serpent as well, although that's a lot of light and dark. What made you cut him? I took Sky Serpent out because as good as Soirees are, they do not, uh, and it's kind of what I talked to you about, they don't have a lot of on-attack triggers. The only ones that do in this current list now are Galoof, which I don't really need to run three light cards just to make Galoof's triggers work. So yeah. that's kind of the reason I took him out. I debated throwing around some other cards just to like put in there. So like, oh, I'll throw in Rufus or I'll throw in Ishtola, some other ice cards to get some on-attack triggers, and I was like, yeah, then you're kind of getting away from the soiree package, and it's yeah. already a very tight list as is if you're wanting to have those extra bursts, so I just kind of cut them for now, and just felt like it might be a little bit better and not color block me, because I had my wife play this game at a locals near me, and she ended up losing the game because she drew one of those last ones when she drew a Shantoto to clear the board, and she got color blocked and lost the game because yeah. of it, so... Yeah, That's... it can be brick. Well, well said. Obviously, Titan and uh, Leviathan are just really strong EX bursts, and I still just kind of always have a soft spot for Titan in my heart. Kusith, Miss Dragon, all looks really good. So I know you said before we came on camera here that you weren't 100% done tinkering with this. We're going to see how it does in the tournament here in a second. Is there anything you would still change about it? Is there some card you're just like, eh, I just am not sure about this card? I still don't know about Kelger for sure. He's like the main one. I felt like anytime I saw him, I was like, ah, that's not the right time. Or I didn't fight anybody or play against anyone that had the five or more. So I was like, eh, mm. this card isn't super great. Galoof is another one where like, I felt like if I was already winning, the card was like, oh yeah, you can win more. Or like I had him in my hand in like the final game I played. And I was like, oh, I'll play him next turn. And then like Miss Dragon, my break. So I was like, okay, this card's just like way not as good now. Like, yeah. So it gets pitched. And so he's just very susceptible to Miss Dragons from Earth or... He, like you said, he can just be dull frozen from ice. So I'm not super thrilled about him. I'm still messing around with that. And then just kind of tinkering with the numbers of some of the other ones. I, did, I cut that Titan. I like it a lot too, the five cost summon, but like I cut him down to one just because I was like, ah, I need to make up slots. Same with the six cost Leviathan. Never want to cast it, obviously. Right. Unless you're playing some like lighter dark list. Um, but it's always nice to see in a burst. But yeah, just kind of mess around with that. When you mentioned the Gudon, you know, if you you could combine the slots with the Kelger and the Gal of Forg, it's the same colors. You get two colors in one card. Can't be dull frozen. He's just, he is just a beater. So obviously, if you need like removal, maybe you're missing that. But yeah, could potentially try that in those slots too. I had a couple other cards in the list for sure. I like had screenshots that I was trying to go over, and I was like, oh, okay, well maybe I just need to go over like. I, I had a couple just different options, so I was like throwing around with like the idea of the fiend. This is a good card that like blocked and like, fits the water package. Uh, yeah, it, it laid into more of that. You already want to take damage, so it gets up to that damage five ability a lot really quick. 
Xenos was good, but then I was like, I don't really want more dark. Same with Kadage. Right. And then a, I'm just for more aggro if I ever wanted to consider that. But yeah, those the are fi- like some of the other. The Fiend's around. an interesting one too, because especially if you hit him for free off of Kieran, you know, it uh-huh. generally it doesn't feel good to pay four for the Fiend just because he doesn't technically do anything when he comes in. But if he hits for free off of Kieran and now potentially you're knocking out some of theirs plays, that, that'd be cool. I'd be curious to know how he goes. Speaking of the Fiend, so there's one last card I want to ask about, and it is a water card, and it is this uh, Luca backup. How relevant is it, her anthem that she gives to the soirees? Do you find that, like, wow, that actually really makes a huge difference in a lot of matches? Or do you find it kind of, eh, it's not necessarily you have to have it? Uh, I love Luca in this list. Um, so the Materia Cup, it saves me, or it saved me a ton. I, I also ran the Aerith 2 drop uh, from Opus 16 back at that time just for the power bump. I would, I would go for more power. Mm-hmm. But in this list, like, it puts Madame Edel out of Amaterasu range, which is super nice. You yeah. never want to pay an Amaterasu to just, like, stop an effect. You want it to kill the card too so like being able to do that uh feels really good it also gets over a lot of those 9ks um that other people have like sky serpent it has that first strike but if i can get that online plus the lexa bump that's a 10k yeah so i'm able to swing over like sky serpent regagene and his first strike and so on so that's i really like the luka in this list for sure and it gives you the colors for wool without having to see the tyro or the shantoto excellent so how do you feel like soirees are placed in the meta right now in opus 21 I mean, soirees, I feel like are always going to be a very, like, viable competitive deck. I don't think, like, there's anything wrong with them. They have a straight-out break with Meryl. They have a lot of card draw with Vesvia and one of the fastest backup setting lines, at, like, in the game with Amber into Shinju. Then your color fix, you can play Lexa and Elbis and yeah. put whatever other backup you want down. And, like, you don't even have to pay the color, like, for Lexa and Elbis, which is always nice. So I feel like their backup line is very strong. The fact that you can throw in a lot of bursts, which is just a very strong mechanic in Final Fantasy in general, since you can't respond to it. Um, and then, like, their package in general is great, and then you throw in just some other really good cards. And it's flexible. It doesn't have to be the Kieran list. It could be, like, any other multicolor element list um, that's not specifically Warrior of Light, which is always nice. Yeah. And anything that Warrior of Light goes in, we know what a great card he is. So yeah, anything to take advantage of him. Well, folks, that is the deck tech. Again, not a whole lot of new stuff here. Darkness Manifest being a big one. That's a deck tech, so we are going to go to some matches. If you're not interested in that, you can cut out now, and I appreciate you watching. Have a Merry Christmas, but if you want to see how this performed in an RVA Weekly Tournament, let's jump over to that. All right, so we are here for RVA number 222. Uh, we do have Dalton. Uh, this is a kind of midway through his second match. We obviously won't be able to get to the whole thing because John tuned in at this point. So at this point... Uh, you are on damage three, your opponent's on damage five, and my oh my, wouldn't you know it, you are taking on <laughs> Ice Earth, deck I hadn't seen in a moment, and has a, a little card back there called Arcanist, which is the bane of Soiree's existence. <laughs> yeah, at least the list I run, the, the four cost list, I, I was talking to my opponent Key, at the, I was just like, man, this card literally gave me so much grief at Materia Cup, I, I hate that I'm seeing it again at Locals, I thought this card was gone, but... As John pointed out, it, it made sense because, like, you've had that Warrior of Light, the new seven cost drop. It's running around that uh, summons all the three costs. So, Arcanist is like, hey, stop all three costs now. Yeah. Just happened to go really good against Soiree, which was playing a four cost Kieran list. So, no, that's huge. Well, and Kieran, I remember the moment I saw this board state, Kieran was like, oh, hey, that's got to be good here. Like, you can't dull freeze that. So, no, uh, no, no messing around with that. So we're going to skip forward a little bit. Was there anything that we didn't see on camera? I don't know how much you remember, but like, is there anything worth kind of mentioning before we got to this state? Uh, my opening hand was pretty terrible. As you can see, my first backup was Luca, and then I had to play Tyro too. So I had, I think it was like three or four turns before I even saw Amber to get Shinju. Mm. So I, I had to go more so into that route before I was able to get my color fixing. But there was nothing like crazy um, that really happened in this game. I don't think from Kihi. Uh, gotcha. Well, and I uh, notice yeah. he just plays a Weiss with no uh, Nero on the board, so he can't discard, he can't try to dull freeze one of the other soirees. And interesting, too, in a deck like this, even though he has the Arcanist, he now has to keep up resources for it every turn. Otherwise, you're just going to run, run, run through it. Yeah, this is another point where that Luca power bump came in handy. Like, he could have technically left Arcanist up and said, oh, yeah, swing with your, like, 8Ks potentially to trade, and you have to leave up Lexa. Otherwise, like Luca just gives that bump now naturally, which yeah. is always nice for the Weiss at damage five. So you can see John looking over some of those cards. So I'll skip ahead here. 
Uh, I believe, if I remember, so yeah, you go to combat. Obviously, he says the Arcanist. You're gonna send in Kieran. Any any qualms about Kieran, or you know, worried about Weiss blocking, or you're like, nah, I'm, I'll go ahead. Trade I had that another two Kieran two. in hand at this point, so I was like, okay with him blocking and trading. I wanted the Weiss to die because I didn't want any more dull freeze triggers coming in. Uh, which is, I was like, eh, if Kieran hits something, so I I had a like brain fart here, and I played Kieran. I was like, oh yeah, Kieran's gonna. Like, just get me anything to my hand, and then you play it for free with Octagon, because I can't just <laughs> yes. play it to the field. So I was like, I'll just hold on to another Merald in case he dies, and I'll break something. I was like, oh, wait, no, that's not how that card works. Just so kidding. I'll, I'll get to that um, point. So Key does cast Miss Dragon in response to keep Weiss alive, which, yeah. w- when he did that, too, I was like, I get why he did it, because he absolutely needs, like, the mm-hmm. blocker. But it was also like, I was like, uh, Dalton has five in hand, full backups. He probably isn't sweating that too much. Like you said, you play a new another Kieran. You reveal Edel, Kieran... Vesvia, Merold, some good choices, and yeah, you uh, you pick Merold, but put it into your yeah. hand, which is funny. So like the yeah, again, the reason I wanted to put Merold was like I was like, oh, I'll put it in my hand. And I was like, oh yeah, no way, you have to play him to the field. I can't do that. So that was a mistake, and I didn't. The reason why I didn't instantly snap pick Adam Edel is because I knew that we were already going to go. It, like he was trying to just stall. He couldn't win at this point. Yeah, he was going to deck out. I only had eleven cards left in deck, and I didn't want to draw more because the only card I had in my break zone was Vesvia. Mm. So I was like, well. My only win condition at this point is that I have to get in with Kieran, which I can't really... He's not going to swing in for damage. So I knew Kieran wasn't going to get over Whis. So unless I saw another one, the only win condition I had was Darkness Manifest. So I had to... Because he already played a Shantoto early in the game. That was like my turn two or... Th- or not two or three. Probably like turn five. I had a Darkness Manifest online. And he just Shantoto to my board. Um, so I got rid of one. So I was very thankful that I included the second one in this list. So I was digging for that final one, but I didn't want to like speed through my list and not be able to play him and get that damage in so that's why i was hesitant to draw right but i knew that was my only win condition at this point whereas i think he was more worried about the zidane uh sneaking under like weiss um but no yeah. that's that's very wise uh especially again you can see your deck counts there you are at uh well once those cards go back in you're at 16 he is even despite taking more damage he's ahead of you on deck count and with that arcanist you, they can stall like this and that's how i've seen a lot of these ice earth matches go is the soiree player legit just decks out so that's uh i i definitely understand your thinking and i like that you were cognizant of that that hey i don't actually want to use vesvia and like overdraw into my deck yeah, for sure. Um, and I knew he only had one Arcanist, so he couldn't stop the Kieran currently. Like, Kieran could still attack each turn, even if he had to block with Weiss or Weiss. Um, and I knew I had Kusis that I hadn't seen, so I could get another Kieran back if needed. Um, again, but that just digs me further into my deck, which, again, is not what I'm looking for. Absolutely. But I think coming up here, he ends up playing another Arcanist, which is really what had me worried. I was like, okay, now I literally only have one out. <laughs> <Start this manifest. laughs> uh he's a seven cost thankfully they can attack but he also has to uh he's let that free damage but he's so yeah if he turns off both your fours and your, yeah. and your sixes what do you do so we'll skip yeah. ahead a bit yep so he taps the toto there's the next arcanist and he still had he still has enough obviously now he does need a whole turn for that to come online yeah which is kind of why i swung him with the key in here like I said, I think I had one Kusith in hand, and I was like, well, I have to get this in, because if he starts stopping two cards per turn, I don't know if I'm going to have enough time, even with Darkness Manifest, to like slowly kill him. It just gives him time to find answers. Um, so you do attack the with only- the Kieran. He moves... Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. He does yeah, move the Biblos yeah. around. Uh, just takes the damage, though. Ops decides, nope, I need to try and hold on to this Biblos. Takes a Kefka into damage. I was You and I were kind of chatting a bit, too, as I was watching this last night. That uh, I mean, I understand the idea behind Kefka, I don't know. I'm just not a fan of that card. I just feel like oh, it's guess, still too goofy. Yeah, I think he was only saying like he really he like got really upset when it hit the damage. Um, I guess he was wanting to get it to be played and then to die, and then he wanted to play Kieran or uh, sorry Fenrir for free to break something oh, like the okay. break a five cost or more, which would have killed the Kieran. But um, I was just like, oh, I don't really think that was like yeah that he's like kind of looking right now. John is looking at his break zone. And I think that's what he was kind of going for, but. Other than that, I don't think that card would have done as much as he well, needed Well, and I don't to. know if he, this, he knew this card was coming. Maybe he did because you said he shantotoed it earlier, but it is an out to Darkness Manifest, too, because it does yeah. just break a Dark Forge. Break a lighter Dark, for sure. Speaking of Darkness Manifest, we come to claim this land. Comes in on dam- damage six, and I know John was saying there in the chat, too, like, well, answer this now or die. And uh, spoiler alert, yeah, he has no answer for it, and he just dies, so... Yep, so that Darkness Manifest clutches me out game two via the stall of Double Arcanist. I 
I was showing my hand there at a Mist Dragon to try to cancel any summon if he had one. Yeah. And, um, and then the word light and everything was just stuck. But no. yep, I ended up claiming game two with Darkness Manifest. Thankfully, getting me out of that tight spot. And I was like, man, I wish I had this card a long time ago. But well, yeah, it it just seems like such a clutch card. And again, in those elements, paying two again, that's one of those you don't want to pay seven for it, but you're willing to pay two for it. So, so you get to go to the finals. You're against TM44 Rest, who I think his name was Chris. Uh, and we're going to get to see this whole match here on stream, so I'll just let it play. Obviously, he starts with a Sarah backup, probably searches out Kolka, so he is on Earth Water. I'll kind of skip through this, so he does that. You get to start with Amber. Probably, I'm guessing you're going to go get Shinju. Yep. And do we see Shinju come down? Why, yes, we do. Or no? I, not. I did not have any other Earth CP, so that's why I had to pitch the Kieran for the Amber, which felt really bad. Ah. And so I had no other Earth CP to play the Shinju, so I just had to pitch the Arc for the Lexa because it had to be color fixed. But at least it set me up for two backups to play Shinju on curve next turn. Right, which is very good. And I think, if I remember, I think he's going to play Cecil here. Yeah, he's, this is interesting. This is actually quite an interesting turn. So obviously he takes a point of damage, hits Sarah, which is like, you're glad it's not an EX burst. I wonder if he might have been a little sad to see that card go. Maybe not. Maybe he's like, eh, whatever, I'm fixed at this point. Yeah, for sure. I was happy to see Sarah go. I was like, oh, that's a color fixer right there. And now I'm sure you don't run more than one of that in your list because why would you? Yeah. So I was happy to see that out of there. And uh, I, I always hate seeing this Cecil because I'm just like, all right, no matter what I do, that means he's going to play Paladin Cecil uh, and play something for free probably. Yeah. Um, but you you yeah. show yeah, this is going to be a theme. And John talked about it too there on commentary. Uh, you show a lot of patience in this game. You know, you just put the Shinju and you passed. Like you said, you're and and. That has to feel good with Soiree, right? You know you have a lot of bursts. You're okay taking points of damage. Speaking of which, budding. Yep, get a free draw card there. Never, never gonna be upset about that. Love seeing that extra card draw and more answers and more lines of play. Never punished, as they say. Do you always feel that way with Soiree as he puts out a Princess Goblin? Do you, are you like, hey, I'm fine taking the hits? Is there ever a time you do feel kind of pressured, like, oh my gosh, I, I am do something? worried. Like in that final game or the last game, like I didn't want to take any damage because I was like, man, I only have one darkness manifest left. If this gets hit into damage, I lose. Mm. Like that, so like stuff like that. I'm like, I have to see this. The first game, like I, our, my opponent managed to dodge like six out of seven bursts, and I was like, well, all right. So it definitely has its moments. Yeah. But now this play, I love. You pitch the spear Shinju. You slap out Erwin. Erwin is fully online. You know he just searched out Warrior of Light because of the Princess Goblin. So he has a choice here of like, hey, do you pop this Cecil now? Because, mm -hmm. you know, because otherwise you're just going to rip that warrior light out of his hand, which he does opt to do. So he thinks about it for a second. Uh, so he switches Cecil into Paladin Cecil, plays the warrior of light for free. Now you get to see what's left in his hand, which I still think that was probably the right move for him to do. Part of me wondered if it was a little anxious, but I understand yeah. not wanting to lose the wool or potentially the Cecil. I mean, Warrior, Warrior Light puts me on a time limit as well, and I, I don't have many answers to get over that card. So I see the three here. Rosa, I, I got rid of Amaterasu just because I had, like, Shantoto in hand. I was like, I don't really want stuff, stuff being stopped. Granted, I know he doesn't have Fire CP, but, like, he could just top deck it. So I was like, eh, I'd rather just be gone, even though Rosa is also just is equally a good pick. Yeah. Um, I, I think you made the right choice, especially with what you're going to follow up with here, because yeah. I was reflecting on this. If this Warrior of Light Cecil sticks around, you could really be in trouble because, you know, that's just this big old beater body you got to get through. However, you immediately pitch your own wall, pitch your own whatever this next card is going to be. It looks like a Vesvia. And you had Meryl already ready. Mm -hmm. So Meryl just yep. instantly bops the Cecil or the Warrior of Light. Obviously, you got to pay the tax for the Cecil, but who cares? Yeah. Yeah. And I was just like waiting for him to declare it and making sure I was like, oh, he's not going to declare it. But John was like, oh, you need to pay. I was like, yeah, I know. I was just making sure. So yeah. I just pitch a, a card and obviously break it because I'm not letting that card stick around. I just pitch the Kusif and move on. And you get to rush in with the Merold. And of course, he's going to opt not to block because trading Cecil for Merold is not a good trade. But you got and Cecil even, anyway because you had just sent him right to the damage zone. Yeah, even that I had Lex up still so I could have bumped it and wouldn't even admit a trade, which I think is what he was also worried about. Yeah. Um, that yeah, Lexa threat, man. Lex is a good. I, it was kind of crazy to me in, in the heydays of Wall, like when it first, or heydays of Soiree, some people wouldn't run Lexa because I think that card is just so good. For sure, for sure. Yeah, like right here. So now he can use this Rosa to bump by a thousand, but you have Lexa. So you're saying, cool, I'll still trade into anything you do that. Yeah, too. and he doesn't want to trade the Cecil to a Irwin, which literally has already had its effect. So. 
now we're gonna see Madam Edel. I think Vesvia is your only target. Yeah. So my job was to get Vesvia just to get more card advantage. He only had two in hand. I knew he wasn't gonna probably Amaterasu for nothing, but he ends up trying to surprise play and uh, puts a Mist Dragon to remove my break zone. And I wanted to just clarify, which obviously I assume was the play, which it's fine. Leaves my Madam Edel up, but it's rid of my break zone, which I'm not too hurt about because now he's at zero in hand and I have one, which I. I'm fine. I mean, I still have card advantage and I have board advantage, so I was not too upset about this. Yeah, this one was interesting. John talked about it a bit. I thought about it too because I don't know if he needed to miss Dragon here because John was saying, hey, you just want to toto this board at this point anyway. Um, he mm. will end up with one in hand just from drawing off the Mist Dragon. Like, yeah. it's not, I don't think it's wrong. I just don't know if you needed to because, yes, he stopped your card draw. Yes, you're your Edel technically, but your Edel is now still protecting the others. And he went down to just, he lost his whole hand for that. So I, don't, I don't know. Like, again, it's one of those weird, I don't think the Mist Dragon was wrong, but I don't think it was necessarily a good choice either. I wonder if he should have just been patient and held on. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I mean, he gets pretty pretty good top deck luck here, I feel, as well. But, um, yeah, I, I at that point, I was like, I was not upset to lose it. That's why I played that. I was like, eh, it's fine. I, like. I, I lose the Vesvian, I lose my breaks, which kind of seems like I said, this is the game where I had Galoof, that's my last card in hand. So mm -hmm. I was like, well, this card is literally dead now. Like, I, I mean, he can ping something, but I don't have the tax to pay for it. So yeah. it, it just wasn't, like, ideal. So Skip ahead a bit. So he thinks about it for a minute, then opts to just Chanteau to the board. This does cost him. This has got to feel like a pretty decent Toto for you. Yes, you lose three forwards, you lose a Merald and an Edel, but he's also losing two forwards. And he his whole hand went to zero, so I, I felt pretty decent for even though he's not in a bad spot, but I was like, okay, one of the lesser. Yeah, now he's color fixed for wool, which was the only thing I was like, oh, okay, I need to be worried, like I need to watch out for that. But I already took out one wall, so I know we only had two left in deck. So barring any recursion, I knew I was like pretty all right. So we saw you tap there. I think I, I know you have one turn where you draw and pass. I think this might be it. Let me skip ahead a hair just to see if this is. Uh, yeah, so you did. You you. What were you considering doing? Uh, I don't remember. I just remember I had three in hand. I think I had a Warrior of Light, and then I had the Galoof, and I was debating playing the Galoof, and I was like, well, maybe I could get him online, so that way I can start shooting stuff for eight next turn, mm -hmm. barring he doesn't have any way to clear it out, and that way he, he'll, any 40 plays I can just take out now that Cecil's gone, but I was like, eh, I don't really need this. I don't have a way to buff him up. I'd rather just have the CP now and try to get other stuff online later. Yeah. He plays a raw Rydia, presumably with no summon in hand, especially as looks like you were able to draw into. I play a Merald here and just instantly break it. Yep. Which is nice. The old so no that... value Rydia. Yeah, John mentioned that too. Like, well, maybe he shouldn't have just jammed that Rydia out, which I kind of get, but I also get that he was in top deck mode. So he probably felt like, well, I don't just want to pass and do nothing. And, and if the Rydia yeah. does stick, then... Yeah, I knew that, like the worst case I was looking into with a mural there was like a Q-Sith, so I was like, okay, I'm just going to get rid of this before he gets out of control yeah. with like counters, because I knew he was more of a four-category-focused list. Yeah. Uh, blink and you'll miss it, by the way. He's already on five damage. Merald put him to four. Yeah. You swung in with both uh, the Irwin and the Merald on a previous turn. Like You've already got him kind of damage-wise very close, and he did a draw pass as well there. Yeah, for sure. He was down to one card in hand with four backups, so I just think he's like, I need to get some answers. I need to find something to probably get back wool to stop these cards from coming yeah. in, so I just get a free point of damage here. Uh, or I try to go for a free point of damage here. He pays six for Leviathan to try to get Warrior of Light. Um, I was going to Miss Dragon. I was like, actually, Miss Dragon only stops five or less. Never mind. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, could, you, my hands. you could have hit the break zone just to prevent the wall recursion. But, I mean, that yeah. was an expensive play for him, too, to have to hold up the backups for that. Yeah. And so I was just like, ah, that's <laughs> fine. At this point, I was like, if you get wall back and you pay four for wall, I can just play Merald and break him again. So, like, I'm not super upset about him getting that card back there. Yeah. Merald, a very good answer to wall that just says, nope, don't care how strong you are, how many keywords you got. And you pitch a Tyro, which means guess what's coming down? It's a Tyro. Was there a yeah. was there a certain forward you knew you wanted off of this Tyro, or were you kind of debating between a couple of them? Uh, no, I didn't really have anything like too crazy. I knew my break zone was empty, so I was like, eh, I could get an Edel, and that way I can pitch the Merrill to play for get the two for one. Yeah. Um, there wasn't anything I super needed. I did have a Shantoto in hand at this point. That was another reason why I wasn't too upset about the wall. So I had two answers potentially. 
uh, for whatever he was going to play here, which I obviously knew it was going to be Wolf first and then draw a card and then yeah. go from there. I was just really hoping he overextended, or not overextended, but played more than one because I, I want to get Chance Hoto online, but I also don't want to pay seven for killing Warrior of Light. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> a card he paid nothing for, yeah. Exactly, so... I mean, that that's a debate I've had with people in general lately about these board wipes that, you know, seven is very expensive when your opponent hasn't paid anything. <laughs> if, exactly. if their forwards are two or less or free, then it doesn't... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he, get, he, like, gets all the backups back plus draws the cards. It's technically, like, negative two CP. Yeah. You're like, okay, well... <laughs> yeah, he's that perfect free. Yeah, a lot of times people say, even if a card, like gives you your backups back it still costs you the card in hand but since he replaces himself as the card he's legit he's as free as you can be exactly and we'll skip ahead a little bit so obviously attacks with bull hit the other galoof into damage you're probably not too worried about that slaps down rosa which is uh of course any forward you put out means the rosa wall combos online but you have no intention of putting down a forward any concern on your part about his amaterasu or did you have the mist dragon just in case i had a mist dragon just in case um so i that's what i was hoping for the top deck i was like oh do i want to play like this year i was like so i was like waiting for the top deck i was like man i really need a mist dragon just in case and i was like okay cool i got one so yeah. i was very confident about playing shantoto and i was like plus he needs to have exactly like fire cp plus amaterasu yeah. plus something else so i was like eh, if i still have Meryl to break this and well and that's in these rainbow decks that can be tricky when you can't rely on some of these rainbow colored backups like toto that it can be tough to hey not only like you said you have to have the tarasu and you have to the fire the fire cp to pay for it that can doesn't always line up yeah. So speaking sure. of Miss Dragon, here's how we knew you had it because he cast Kuseth. He's like, "Well, let's just do that one more time." And you're yeah. about to say, so in this mm, one, actually, what yeah, we I didn't... was like, oh, "I'll just cancel the summon with Miss Dragon." I was like, "Actually, there's a much better play than this." Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, I "I'd rather just remove everything so that fizzles and I draw a card." This seems much better than just stopping a Kuseth. So. Yeah. Good call. Good call. Now it does yeah. allow him to get Kuseth back off of Fusoya. Uh, I'm assuming he got three modes off of this, so draw a card, get a summon yep. back, and then he gets to bounce one of your characters, and this is something you and I ended up talking about. He ultimately chooses Shinju, um, and I, I think I get why. I'm assuming... So here's... I don't know. So here's the thing with the Shinju. It doesn't... I'll pause the video. It doesn't prevent you from color fixing, right? You have both Tyro and Toto, so you can still get all your yes. colors. Uh, the only thing it really messes with is your soiree numbers that now you have to have another soiree to trigger all the four soiree effects. But I mean, at the absolute worst, you just put the Shinju down again. So I kind of wish he had picked either Tyro or Lexa. Either of those choices shuts off a potential warrior of light next turn, which he hasn't seen you play yet. So you just got to think that that's coming. Yeah, I don't know if he didn't think I had it in my list. It was just pure soiree. But I mean, I'm playing like the Kieran. You see that? So it's like a four cost list. So you probably assume that. I definitely would have probably gone with like the Alexa. Tyro lets me search whatever I want. So if I didn't have a Warrior of Light, I definitely could go get one for the following turn. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I would have probably gotten rid of Alexa because I was like, oh, I already have Amber. That's literally the same thing. Like all you're doing is saving me like my cheapest backup, which I can technically play again, which kind of messes me up here because I'm like, oh, I'm color fixed still for sure. I can just play this. And I try to get like cheeky with the Warrior of Light. To be able to play or like reactivate five backups even though one would have come in dull um and i ended up pitching an elvis for the shinju and i was like oh wait yeah can't do that yeah shinju you pitched elvis and... like, <laughs> 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 i can't do that that doesn't make sense so i i john catches it too and he's like hey or no sorry our opponent catches it he's like hey yeah, you can't do that and everybody else is like oh yeah that makes sense i was like yeah i totally forgot i so i i played warrior of light afterwards i was like i'll reactivate and he's like you did you pitch elvis and i was like oh sorry do you want me to go all the way back Guys had the CP. I could have pitched Edel for the the Shinju and just left it on the field if he wanted, or I could take back the Warrior of Light too and go all the way back and redo the turn, which yeah. is what he opted for me to do. So I just play Warrior of Light out first, reactivate everything, see what I get off the top draw. Yeah, I definitely got what you were going for because you want the full five backup reactivation. Yeah. But yeah, just and it's it's one of those things too. You're so used to always having your colors fixed with your Shinju down that you're like, oh wait, it's not there all of a sudden. I I, I can't do that actually. Yeah, exactly. So this turn gets a little funky as, again, you're kind of trying to navigate some things. Um, you opt to do Edel into Merold. However, because Shinju isn't down. He tries to break his forward. And I was like, no, 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 no. I only have three. 
So I, I already had a double Elbus in hand, so I was just planning on playing Elbus for my last backup to kill it and then going with the haste. I really just wanted the thing. I Again, I could have played... I didn't have any Earth CP. That was the other thing. I had no Earth CP in these last five cards to play Shenju. Mm. Um, that's why I opted for the Edel, but I had a double Fire to play Elbus, which is why I played the Merald there, and I didn't just play Shinju into Merald. Oh, so you knew Again. that. That wasn't a mistake on your part. You knew it wasn't no, going to break so it. No, so I knew like my options were either I play Shinju first with Edel, um, or like I pitched, but I didn't want to have uh, Madam Edel Amaterasu when I didn't have any way to bumper. Sure. So I I paid that. I let the. I was like, I don't want Shinju to go to the break zone because I don't have any other Earth CP. So I played that, and I was like, I'll just give him the haste, and then I'll kill it with the Elbus because otherwise I could have played like Elbus first, yes, and gotten the break. But I, like it's only one forward, so I was like, okay, there's just like 80 ways to win here. Gotcha. I'm just like gonna try to process this but yes i did not have rcp during this point of the game well, i'm glad to hear see that's one of those things like when you're just watching this and you don't you can't hear what you guys are discussing at the table that i'm thinking oh did he mess up did he not realize it didn't break and you're like no no i knew that i just was gonna blast him with elvis anyway so now yeah, you yeah. could have played elvis first but in which case merrill then yeah. doesn't break any so yeah the order there didn't really matter mm -hmm. i guess you could argue maybe elvis is the is the better play that way if he burns an Amaterasu on that, then your forward yeah. comes out, but it, it was Makes fine. sense. He hits Tyro, yeah, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, it was definitely a little bit of a scuffed last play there. The no CP Shinjo, I was like, what am I doing? Um, but yeah, the, the no Earth really messed me up with a mostly Earth deck. I was like, well, okay, I don't know how I don't have any of these cards, but yeah, Elvis ended up working out, Elvis for Elvis, and then yeah, I could have had a Amaterasu just in case, like you said, which would have probably been the, the correct play, definitely, but... Yep, ended up just breaking it anyway with Elvis, and then swinging in with the haste on Warrior of Light, and then the haste with Merald, which is all you need two for that. So, ended up clutching me out my first RVA victory. Woo! Congratulations, man! I was so stoked for you. So, obviously, really successful little run here with Soiree. Uh, great job, major congratulations! I've you know these things aren't always easy to win, especially having to go three and zero to get that top victory. Any kind of final thoughts? Things you you were thinking about? Decks you're worried about seeing? Anything you want to add? No, uh, I mean, like, not really. There's there's always going to be the worry of aggro. Uh, I like the bursts in this list because of that, but again, I feel like the EX bursts are getting cut down lower and lower with the newer cards that come out that don't have that text on them, which is fine. Um, but, like, still, hitting an Elvis and burst always feels good, which actually didn't happen in any of the three games I played. Hmm. Uh, but, yeah, other than that, I mean, I like Soiree. It's always a fun list. If anybody hasn't played it, obviously, you should definitely give it a go. It's very straightforward, which is nice on, like, a longer day like I had that day. Uh, I was just like, okay, I don't have to really think too much with this until it gets to those last plays, and that's when you see me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so my brain's already fried, but, um, yeah. Hey, so. you got there in the end. Well, sir, thank you for joining me. Thank you for sharing your list. Major congratulations on your RVA victory. Uh, folks, you can check out RVA stuff. They do a weekly tournament every Wednesday. I know they won't be streaming next week because of the holidays, but they'll start again in 2024. Dalton, really appreciate having you here. Any final thoughts? Nope, nothing from me. Sounds good. Congrats again. Folks, thank you for watching. Uh, let me know what your favorite build is Soiree. If you have any secret tech in the comments below, hey, this four drop fits really good with Kieran. Whatever it is you've got, appreciate it. Let me know. And until next time, take care.